So Klaubosch just tested positive for COVID-19. He's one of the YouTubers that I enjoy watching. He's this guy who makes videos about school buses and life as a school bus driver. And I just wanted to give a couple of my thoughts regarding his diagnosis uh, as a medical doctor. I crossed the country like eight times, didn't get COVID once, and I didn't die. This video didn't age very well, did it? <laughs> I mean, I'm not dead, but I haven't been feeling right, and I have had a fever and stuff like that, so I am going to go get a COVID test today. So the symptoms I have are sore throat, coughing. I had a slight fever the last couple days. It was like 100.3, not very high. Heavy congestion. I am congested. But here's the kicker. I can't taste or smell anything. So actually, um, congestion is a symptom that we don't typically associate uh, with COVID. But having this lack of sense of taste or smell, just like he said, is one of the most specific things that we ask for and is very common in patients who get COVID. Very much in my experience, when people say that they do have anosmia, which is the lack of sense or taste or smell, they have almost invariably have been testing positive for COVID in my experience over the last year and a half. That's one of the biggest signs of COVID. I swear to God, I'm going to be so pissed if I got COVID driving a school bus or wherever I got it from around here and I crisscrossed the country 10 times, never got COVID once. I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to be so mad. But I'll keep you guys updated. I'll post a part two. I'll let you guys know my test results. Peace. Yeah, so that's just, uh, it's just one of those things where you can be perfect 99% of the time, but then that one time that you screw up, you, you might just get exposed and you'll get infected with COVID. Especially nowadays, as a lot of people are kind of getting desensitized to COVID, uh, just because it's been going on for so long now. People are being a lot more, a lot less cautious, even myself included. But even still, this is kind of a reminder that we had to be kind of vigilant, uh, at all times. Especially for somebody like Klaubas, who's, you know, around kids all the time, who are very, very big vectors for spreading disease. So here's his next video where he talks about uh, his test results after getting his test. That's a cute little uh, clinic there. <laughs> okay, so I just got tested. I couldn't film it. They wouldn't let me film, but that was one of the most horrible experiences of my life. Look at my eyes. Look how much I'm tearing because they went like they poked my fucking brain, dude. Like, oh my God. <laughs> That's something that people, at least in my residency, say all the time. They say it's like a brain biopsy. Uh, it really goes very far. I actually did a test on a patient once, just randomly. Uh, <laughs> they like had me do it. And uh, there's this red marker on this like stick that's like this big. There's like this red line right here. And you got to stick it all the way into their <laughs> into their nose until you get to the red marker. Then you got to like twist it around for like 15 seconds. So I've had it done to me like five or six times now. I I'm not too bad with it, but uh, a lot of people, it's, it's very, very difficult. And it definitely does make you tear up. <laughs> I was horrible. And anyone who comments, oh, it's not that bad. It's pretty bad. I'm not overreacting. It's pretty bad. I should get. See, and this is why I like watching Clawboss. He's just, he's just like a, a funny guy to watch. He, he just seems like such a nice guy. My results in a half hour, so I will share that with you guys. Let's see. Do I have COVID or not? Okay, so this sucks. Um, I have COVID. <laughs> Just got the phone call back from the doctor. The rapid test results came in that quick and it came back positive. So, yeah. Looks like I'm going to be staying in bed for uh, 10 days and just hanging out at home, not working. No gym, no nothing. Wonderful. <laughs> this really sucks. Full capacity on buses this year, I get sick. Great. Yeah, I, I think uh, him actually testing positive did kind of hit him a little bit there. And it is it is very scary because, you know, we do hear we, we do see a lot of people get really sick from it. So uh, it is very scary to be testing positive for COVID. And I think even him, who's very happy and happy go lucky normally. Um, really understood that himself too. All right, and then uh, he started live streaming and I kind of hopped in and I actually started chatting with him in his live stream. He actually ended up reading some of my comments. This is called Pappy's Moonshine Madness. It's around 25,000 Scoville units. It says, so blind, so hot you'll go blind. Well, not right now because this stuff didn't do anything to me. I could barely taste it. Like the, the, the spice barely even got to me and normally that shit knocks me out, so... Yeah, <laughs> COVID's nasty, man. Hope you feel better. Did you get the vaccine? If you did, you should be good. I did not get the vaccine. Um, and I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Here's the thing about the vaccine that, that worries me, okay? I know people who have known people who have died from the vaccine. With that being said, it's, it's a slippery slope when it comes to the vaccine and COVID, okay? Because you can either you can either risk dying from the vaccine or you can risk dying from COVID. In my heart, and this is my heart, this is not my beliefs, it's not religion, it's, it, it's my heart, my gut feeling is if I take the vaccine, something bad's going to happen to me. 
whether it be a heart attack, whether it be something, something is going to happen to me. And I always said I'd rather take my chances with COVID. And now I'm I'm rolling the dice with COVID, and we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, by no means am I an anti-vaxxer. I'm not by any means. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Um, I have all I got all my vaccines when I was a kid. I've gotten the flu shot before. Not an anti-vaxxer. Just I don't trust this chemical concoction that they made that is so fresh and so new and so many people are dying from it. And like I said, I know people who have died from, well, people who know people who died from it. I don't know anyone who died from COVID. Yeah. This is just one of the things where I wish we had a better media system that could actually spread information. That's correct. Because there's just so much misinformation out there. And I think everybody acknowledges that there's a ton of misinformation, but there's, there's people with the wrong information that claim that the misinf that the real information is the wrong information. Anyways, uh, his point about, you know, knowing people who have known people who have died from COVID, I, in my entire time working in the medical field, I don't think I've heard of anybody people dying from the COVID vaccine. And that being said, I, you know, it's a possibility. There are rare side effects. There are people who end up getting diagnosed with cancer who ended up having their COVID vaccine delivered like just coincidentally prior to their COVID, their cancer diagnosis. But that doesn't mean that the COVID vaccine gave them cancer. It was already there. It's the fact that we're giving so many hundreds of millions of vaccines means the, the chance of somebody dying like soon after getting their COVID vaccine is pretty high. But it's not because of the COVID vaccine that they died. The fact that he doesn't know anybody who has died from COVID is unfortunate because, um, like I said, I've, I've known nobody who has died from the COVID vaccine. But I have known many, many, many patients who have died from the, from COVID. And right now, currently, when I go to the ICU and when I go to the hospital, 99% of the patients are unvaccinated. Maybe there was one or two people who were vaccinated, but they usually had some kind of underlying immunocompromised condition or something. But people who are unvaccinated by far do worse than anybody who's vaccinated. So like that comment, like that viewer said, uh, if you get the vaccine, you should be fine. And that's not to say that I don't have my own hesitations about getting this booster shot, but I think the evidence for getting the first two shots of your Pfizer or Moderna vaccine is very, very good. And the chance of side effects is extremely, extremely, it's exceedingly low. Like there are some very rare cases of myocarditis where your heart muscle kind of gets inflamed and can cause some problems, uh, but it's exceedingly rare, like I said. And if our media had just done a better job of actually spreading real information about how good the evidence is for preventing severe disease from COVID, um, you know, people like Koblas, much, you know, he sounds like a very reasonable person. He just wasn't surrounded by the right amount of information. And so that's why he didn't get a vaccination, which in his case is going to lead to him having a very risky course of disease. All right. I think this is, uh, this is when he reads one of my comments. Um, let me say pretty concerned for him to be honest. He's on the vaccine. He's only had symptoms for about two days, going to get a lot worse over seven days. He's going to ER immediately have breathing problems. Um, I've actually had symptoms for the past five days. I got them around Thursday. Um, that's when the symptoms really – Friday is when their symptoms really kicked in. And so I got a fever. Um, Saturday and Sunday I had a fever. Today I didn't have a fever and my symptoms went down a little bit, um, except yesterday is when the uh, not being able to taste started. So – my symptoms are actually going uh, up and then down. Yeah, so uh, it was actually when he started reading my comment, I was like, oh my God, he's actually, actually reading one of my comments. But I think knowing the timing of when the onset of symptoms was is very important for us as uh, doctors and physicians uh, and anybody in the healthcare field because we uh, very clearly see a peak of symptoms around 10 to 14 days. And so when he tells me that he's been you know having symptoms for about five days that's a little bit more reassuring than if he says he's only been having symptoms for two days thankfully he's not had any shortness of breath throughout all this so far uh, but he definitely is not out of the woods yet and very likely could develop some shortness of breath that requires him to go to the ed and so i told him it's very important for you to go to the ed if you develop any shortness of breath because that way uh, if he needs oxygen that would be an indication to start steroids and an antiviral medication called remdesivir as soon as possible and getting those started earlier will have a better uh, effect at pre 
preventing an extreme immune response that could lead to very severe lung injury. So as soon as a patient develops shortness of breath and needs oxygen, they need to go to the ED right away to start uh, therapy because that'll give them the best chance of the therapy actually altering their course. And if Clawboss is watching this video, um, you know, I think a majority of people are going to do well with COVID. You know, most people have no problems with it at all. But I did tell him later in the video that he is at higher risk because of his weight and he understands that as well. And so if there's any symptoms Symptoms like leg swelling, chest pain, shortness of breath, those are all reasons to go to the ED immediately. The leg swelling and chest pain I mentioned because uh, we know that COVID patients are at higher risk of developing blood clots. Uh, and so he needs to stay mobile, stay walking around, don't just stay in bed all day. And then if he develops any uh, scary symptoms, needs to get evaluated right away. So Clawboss, if you're watching this, let me know if you develop any of the symptoms and I can help tell you uh, if you need to go to the ED or not. Or just go to the ED. That's probably the best solution, to be honest. If you're about to die, at least make your last video. <laughs> <laughs> some people with some pretty if morbid I, if humor. I die, I die, man. That's the way I put it. Then you put it as perfect, hoping for the best for you, man. Most people do fine with COVID, but you're the higher risk because your weight... Uh, but really hope you recover quickly. Yeah, I, I get, I hear that a lot. I'm a higher risk, but the thing is, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying this, you know, I, I'm not saying this as like a, a jinx or anything. Um, but I am 100% healthy. Like that's the only difference between me and other like, like heavy people. Um, I passed my my uh, my DOT physical with flying colors. Um, you know, like I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure. Well, my blood pressure was high today because of the stress, but um, I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have, uh, what's that thing that the cereal reduces? I don't even have a name. It. I don't He's have talking that. about cholesterol here. <clears throat> um, that cough over there. But yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I get what he's saying. You know, he doesn't have any other medical conditions basically, but um, we do see a lot of healthy people still getting severe disease and almost unanimously the uni unifying factor between all those patients is obesity. So I've seen patients with no medical history, they're in their late 30s and, or early 40s and they have high blood pressure and they're obese and they end up in the ICU, they end up intubated on a breathing tube. Um, so it can happen, man, it, even if you just have obesity as your past medical history. So um, he is still at very high risk. I am still concerned for him. Uh, and so, like I said before, he needs to be very, very vigilant about any symptoms or worsening symptoms and make sure he gets them evaluated quickly. All right. So uh, I think that's all I have to say for this video, man. Um, you know, I, I'm sad that he's he's got sick. He's going to feel pretty bad for the next probably two weeks uh, and even longer. We you know, we see people with these co post covid symptoms, brain fog, uh, persistent shortness of breath or persistent loss of taste for several months sometimes. And like I said, he's at high risk, so I am concerned, but I'm definitely hoping for a great recovery for him um, and a, a fast and smooth recovery for him because he is a YouTuber that I enjoy watching. He makes really cool videos, very wholesome videos. Uh, he's just a really cool guy. So uh, wishing the best for him. And I guess over the next coming days, we'll see uh, how his course goes. I'll definitely be closely following along. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And thanks for watching and tune into Clawboss if you're interested in watching his videos as well. Thanks again. Peace.